today topic is uh, acceptable giving and uh, offering you know so the first question I'm, I want to ask now our guest is how can we give acceptable to the Lord that is my number one question well wow, thank you so much and uh, by the grace of God giving and offering is what the lord has also is in a commandment he has commanded us to do so that means when the lord the lord has commanded us to do that it attracts reward but that reward should not be centered in your heart when you are giving it don't put like like dread by butter no 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 okay and that is a good beginning when giving an offering or or offering to the lord hallelujah now for according to her question, how can we Christians give acceptably to the Lord? Not all giving and offering is accepted by the Lord. There are there are some giving and offering called wasted. That means when you give it, the Lord will not accept them. Though the pastor or the prophet or the evangelist, the person in question, can accept it, but the Lord it will not attract reward. Hallelujah. Now. For the fact that you are involved, you know, in giving and offering does not automatically translate to be accepted by the Lord. I want us to know this. For the fact you go to the church, you give, does not translate that God have received it. So there is what is called the justice system of God. And that justice system of God is located somewhere in your heart. Hallelujah. When God wants to accept your offering, giving, he goes to his justice system. There, God will know why you want to give him. So, consider motive. God always considered motive, the reason why you are giving to him. Motives, motive means a lot to God. No wonder. Let's go to the old covenant. It's a good beginning. Remember, whenever you are reading Bible, the Old Testament or Old Covenant, it is called the Word of God. And the New Testament, it is called the Word of Man, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. That is, these are two different things. That is why you go in the Bible, in the Old Testament here, thus says the Lord, I, the Lord, say so, because it is called the Word of God. And the New Testament is the Word of Man, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now let's go and hear the word of God. What the Lord said in the book of Jeremiah 17 verse 10. Let us understand this as we move. Remember, motive means a lot to God. And when God, we are God can find the motive, is somewhere located in your heart. So Lord, let's read, read the scripture. As uh, Jeremiah 17 verse 10. God bless you. He said, but I, the Lord, search all has and examine secret motive. I gave I give all people their due reward according to what their actual deserve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, that is to tell you, God said in God's justice system, it's located somewhere in your heart. That is why God said, I the Lord, I the Lord. Now this is coming from the mouth of God. He said, Tell my children, I the Lord. I search the house and I will reward you according to. He said, I, the reigns of this, that means there is nothing can be hidden from God. He said, your motive, and I will reward you according to your actions. You know, that is motive, your actions. Why did you give to the Lord? It means a lot. Do you know why the Holy Spirit led it and our spirit to teach you? God gave a commandment. And that commandment, God is more than able to bless us abundantly. But because of wrong giving, your wrong motive, you don't receive. And pastor can receive it, as I said. But the Lord said, I, the Lord, I will not receive it. That's why most of us give. And let me tell you, when you give acceptably, you will see the greatness of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 1, Jesus now begins to counsel us about this. Let's hear what Jesus now has to say. 
in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 1, please. Let's go very fast. God bless you. Do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others. For you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is coming now from, now from the mouth of the Pastor Jesus. Pastor Jesus. No. Pastor Jesus now is giving us a counsel as a loving father. He care for us. He tell us, telling us that, look, my beloved children. Remember, the motive again, he said, do not do your, give your arms to be seen by men. The motive, your actions again, according to the word of God in the book of Jeremiah 17 verse 10. The justice system of God, God is interested in your motive. That's why Jesus also counseling us. So look, don't make it to be seen by men. Your motive. You want to show up. You want to be given to be seen by men. Do you know why? That applaud when they clap for you. Oh, who will give 1,000? Who will give 500? They praise you. Jesus said, if you involve in that giving, you have received that praise. God will not give to you any reward. That's why Jesus confirmed what Jeremiah 17, according to the word of God, my beloved, God is more than able to bless us. But we are giving wrongly. And today, the churches have ignored this. That's why through the Holy Spirit, I want you, you, hearing me today, to know the truth. Because Jesus said, when you know the truth, the two will set us free. He said, I, the Lord, I search the heart. Let your arms, don't do it publicly. Don't do it to be seen by men. So, therefore, when you involve in bazaar, when you involve in the church, they say, oh, who wants to give 300 to support? Give it. God will not receive it. No matter how big it is. Hallelujah. Let's hear. I think Jesus counsel us now how to give. In verse 2, let's hear how Pastor Jesus give us a counseling. Just like I am saying it. And let's see what he has to say. In verse 2, God bless you. Say. When you give to someone in in need, do not don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogue and streets to call attention to their heart of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. This is a wonderful. wonderful. Are you doing it a prophet in a trumpet? Mm -hmm. If you involve in the church, where they're doing it's also a trumpet. He said, This is how the hypocrites people do. Remember, God advised us to give in secret. Most of us, when we give help to our fellow Christians, we always make it a public to prove to let that person down. I do this, I help you, I do this, I do that. Just you have a little problem. The Bible said that you have no reward from God. Because this is how hypocrites, these are people who don't know God, who have no knowledge of God. This is how the world behaves. Hallelujah. Let's hear if Romans 12 verse 8 agreed in what we said. Okay. Can you read Romans 12 verse 8? 12 verse 8, please. All right. If I first get there, I will read. I'm just trying to bring out some scriptures that will agree what we are saying here. Because without the scripture, we don't teach. We teach according to the scripture. So that you too, as I'm as we are reading the scripture, please do us a favor, write them down. Remember the Barian Christians. Hallelujah. Can you read it, please? 12 verse 8, Romans 12 verse 8. Verse 8. If it is given uh, graciously. If God has give, given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, it's okay. That is good. Now, nah, you're talking about giving willfully and gladly. Okay? You give gladly. You give willfully motive. Willfully from your heart. Don't be allow somebody else to force you. Anything you give out of pressure, it is no longer willingly. It's not gladly. You are not. You are being compared. Compare. Hallelujah. Now, do you know again that whatsoever you do to a Christian, you do it direct to Jesus. I want to uh, do you imagine Jesus come to your house today. 
everyone hearing me and those who will hear it later. When Jesus comes to your house, will Jesus, any help Jesus asks you, won't you give to Jesus? I'm asking you this question. If Jesus knock your door, you see, I'm saying, Pastor Jesus, please, I need 100 euros. I need 2,000, I need 5,000. Will you give to Jesus? In fact, I will go and borrow. I will rush and borrow and give everything I have. Now, Jesus said that even though Jesus is not with you physically, whatsoever you do to a Christian, you do it directly to Jesus. I'm not gazing. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the Matthew 25. From 35 to 40, please. In fact, I'm going to read it very fast. Huh? Matthew 25, 35. Okay, okay I'm, I'm reading. Re okay, you are reading. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, he says, For I was an hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. 36, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked? And clothed thee, or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee. Pay attention, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as, as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Hallelujah. So this is coming from the scripture. In as much as you render help to, you say, those who believe in him, someone may ask, can't I do help to those who are not Christians? This is a very good question because some people might have it in mind. Now, Jesus here make a specification of, look, anyone who believe in my name, he should do help for them. Then, after them, for example, if you have three Muslims, okay, if you have them, if you have three Muslims, have three Christians, you say, do first for the Christians. First, then the one that remains, you can do to others. Hallelujah. 